Hello, this is Jerry Wink, and I want to welcome you to Accounting 201, the very first lecture for Chapter 1, Accounting in Action. So I've made lecture notes for this edition of the book, and you will see um, that they're pretty complete and they're pretty thorough, so I would encourage you to make sure you have them in front of you. The other thing that you need to have in front of you is your book open to page 22 or 23. Okay, when you get there, you can, you can pause this and then come back when it's time. Okay, so what I want to do right now is just go quickly through the um, lecture notes and kind of show you what's there. So the first thing that's there is what is accounting. It gives us the definition because you've got to start out with everything with the definition. It's kind of what we do when we work accounting and when we work in that field. It talks about who uses the accounting information, whether they're inside the company or outside the company. There is a distinct difference between bookkeeping and accounting, so you need to be aware of those differences. And then it starts in with building blocks of accounting, and the first building block is ethics. Um, in this class, we will have total, complete, good ethics, both from a student perspective and from my perspective. Um, in the textbook, it talks about ethics as a business concept, and it gives you some ethical examples of things that happen in the real world. So be sure that you read them. Some of them are very interesting. Um, and some of them you can probably skip over. Okay, then the next thing is it talks about generally accepted accounting principles. So I use the acronym for that, GAAP, G-A-A-P, which stands for Generally Accepted Accounting Principles. And it's the rules that we go by when we are going to use, um, when we are going to record journal entries. So the, the, we're going to go through just a few of them right now. So historical cost, we're going to record our assets at historical cost, and we do not adjust them for fair market value. So in class, we can talk about the difference between U.S. GAAP and um, international GAAP. And there's a difference. In U.S. GAAP, it's primary, primarily historical cost, and in international accounting, it's primarily fair value, where the assets and liabilities are reported at fair value and not at historical cost. And we're going to be focusing on U.S. GAAP in this class. Okay, another thing you need to know is there are two assumptions. The monetary unit assumption, we're going to use dollars and cents to measure every transaction, and we're going to assume that the dollar is stable, that it does not change for any, any um, exchange rates. As exchange rates change, our dollar is not going to change in this class. If you want to know more about how those exchange rates affect financial statements, stick around for advanced accounting, which is one of the last classes accounting majors take. The next assumption is economic entity, and this one is really important. We want to do the accounting for an economic entity, and we don't want to mix entities. We want to keep them all separate. So if you own a company by yourself, it's a proprietorship, you should have a bank account for yourself that is separate from a bank account for the company. So you want to keep the company's books separate from your personal books, and that's really important to the IRS because they don't want you deducting on your company tax return any personal expenses. They get upset about stuff like that. Okay, and then the next part that I want to talk about is um, the basic accounting equation. Okay, this is the most important concept to start with, period. Assets equal liabilities plus stockholders equity. You have to know this. This is very important. If you look on your page 22 or 23, wherever the page is that has the financial statements on it, you will notice on the balance sheet, which is near the bottom of the page, I believe. I do not have my book in front of me. I apologize. Um, the assets, the liabilities, and the stockholders' equity are all on the balance sheet. So I want you to know this is, the, this is what I want you to know from Chapter 1. I want you to know everything there is to know about assets. 
Okay, and this is the information. These 10 items is what I want you to know. I want you to know that the assets are the resources that are owned by business. I want you to know that the assets have the capacity to provide a future service or a future benefit to the companies that use them. I want you to know that they go on the balance sheet. Okay, here you go, right here, normal balance. I'm all about normal balances. The normal balance of an asset is a debit. A debit is simply the left side of a T account. And a T account is a substitute for part of the accounting records, the general ledger. And we'll get into that all that in a bit. If you want to increase an asset, such as cash, you are going to increase it by debiting the cash account. If you want to decrease cash, such as if you've written a check or paid a bill, you will decrease cash with a credit for the journal entry. The four asset accounts I want you to be familiar with right now is cash, accounts receivable, that comes about where you've made a sale and somebody owes you money, supplies inventory, in your book they're going to call it just supplies, but I like to call it supplies inventory to, to separate it from a supplies expense because expenses and inventory are different. So you purchase some office supplies on hand, you have them, and you use, as you use them they come out of inventory and go into an expense account. And then equipment. So right now I want you to memorize that these four accounts are assets. Assets are on the balance sheet, they have a normal debit balance, increase with the debit, decrease with the credit. Okay, let's go to the next one. Liabilities. Okay, this is what you owe to somebody else. So it represents an existing debt or an obligation. It goes on the balance sheet. Liabilities have a normal credit balance because look back at your accounting equation your assets that have debit balances are going to equal the liabilities and stockholders equity that just happen to have credit balances. So total debits must equal total credits. That's an important concept. Excuse me, back to liabilities. If a liability has a normal credit balance, then you're going to increase a liability account with a credit and you'll decrease it with just the opposite, a debit. You only have two liability accounts right now that you need to know. Accounts payable and notes payable. An account payable is kind of like your charge card. You've just charged something and you're gonna, you agree to pay it within about 30 days or so. The, the notes payable is something you would have that is a written contract that you agree to pay and you're going to pay interest on it. Okay. Again, assets equal liabilities plus equity. You've got stockholders equity, which is your ownership claim against the assets. So it's what's left over from your assets after you've paid off all of your liabilities. The financial statement, equity goes on, is the balance sheet. Just like liabilities, equity has a credit balance. You will increase every equity account with a credit, decrease it with a debit, and the two equity accounts that you need to be familiar with now are paid in capital uh, for common stock, and we may just call it common stock. And the last one is retained earnings. Okay, for retained earnings, everything goes back into the balance sheet. So the accounts we're going to cover here in just a minute are revenues, expenses, and dividends. So if you take all of the revenues for a year, you subtract the expenses from them, you subtract any dividends you've paid to your shareholders, that's going to give you the retained earnings that goes on your balance sheet. So it all it's like a puzzle and it all fits together. Okay, because revenues are going to increase stockholders equity, we increase stockholders equity with a credit, then the revenues have a normal credit balance and they go on the income statement and they, there's only two things on the income statement revenues and expenses so if a revenue has a normal credit balance you always increase with whatever the normal balance is so that's a credit 
and you decrease with the opposite balance, which is a debit. So there are different types of revenues that companies can have. They might have sales revenue when they sell some merchandise. They might have service revenue if they perform a service such as a CPA firm or a law firm. They might be a rental company and they rent property and then they'd have rent revenue. They might be a bank and their business is lending money and they would have interest revenue. So if it has revenue behind it, that makes it a revenue account. It's pretty simple. Okay, notice that earned is in yellow, bold, and underlined. That means it's important. For right now, we are gonna record revenues when we earn them. In chapter three, you'll learn why. So right now, just know if revenue is earned, we make a journal entry and we record our revenue. Okay, expenses, again, they are incurred. So when we incur an expense, we're gonna record it. You'll learn why in chapter three, okay? When revenue is earned is not necessarily the same time revenue is collected, that you get the cash. When an expense is incurred, it is not necessarily the same time you make the payment to pay it. Okay, uh, expenses, again, go on the income statement because they're just like, they're with the revenues. Revenue minus expense is going to give us income because expenses, right here, notice that we subtracted them to get to retained earnings. They will have opposite the retained earnings balance because an expense will decrease your equity, it decreases retained earnings, it decrease, you'll decrease revenue with it, so it has a debit balance. Expenses are increased with the debit and decreased with the credit. Um, it rep, an expense represents the cost of assets that you have used up, it's those office supplies you bought and used, or it's the cost of services that you've used, or um, it's an actual cash that flows out, you've written a check for something, or it's what you expect to write a check for. And those are a little bit beyond what we need right this minute, so don't worry too much about eight and nine here. Here are examples of expense accounts. Notice that every one of them has expense as the last word in the account name, other than cost of goods sold. So. The cost of the goods that we sell that give us the sales revenue are going to be offset against that revenue as an expense. So cost of goods sold is an expense. If we pay salaries and wages to our employees, that's an expense. If we rent an office building, that's an expense. When we use up supplies or utilities, those are expenses. If we have to pay interest to another entity, that's an expense. We have to pay property taxes on assets that we own. If it's property, that would be an expense. Notice that they all have the word expense at the end. Oh, advertising. It slipped over to the next page, sorry. Okay, net income is when revenues are greater than the expenses. Net loss is just the opposite when your expenses are greater than the revenues. Okay, so we've handled most everything now. Remember, revenues minus expenses, okay, could give us net income or net loss, and that is gonna flow into and become the retained earnings, all right? So we're missing one item yet, and that's dividends that we subtract to get to our retained earnings balance. Okay, so I'm gonna go down and pick up here on dividends. Uh, dividends is the cash or another kind of asset, for right now it's all gonna be cash, um, that we pay to our stockholders. When a stockholder invests in a corporation, then they expect to get a return on that investment. And one of the returns is dividends. So the financial statement it goes on, we're gonna have a separate statement of retained earnings. It's not a full-fledged financial statement like the balance sheet, the income statement, and the statement of cash flows are, but it's a supplementary financial statement that we use to, to help get to the balance sheet numbers. Okay, dividends have a normal debit balance. You increase them with a debit and you decrease with a credit. 
they reduce retained earnings, and they are not an expense. So that's an important thing to note. They're not income. They're not expense. They are dividends. It's not an asset. It's not a liability. It is a part of your equity. It's a reduction in your equity accounts. Okay, I think that's enough to take in. So if you know that information to start Chapter 1 with, that's where we're going to focus on most of the things we're going to do. Okay, I'll see you in class. I hope you looked at this before you come to class. Bye.